Uh, my name is Dr. Gustavo de Siqueira. I'm the CEO of Biomega. Uh, and we have an, an absolute passion for isolating bacteria from natural environments. What is interesting about camel's milk is that it's a very rich mixture. So we're talking about um, an ecosystem that is essentially a pharmacy of molecules, beneficial molecules. And, and camel's milk being such a rich mixture of molecules, compounds, but also bacteria and, uh, and the compounds produced by those bacteria, they actually fortify the milk. They create a number of um, you know, beneficial properties with potential application in therapeutics, nutraceuticals, and, uh, and creating benefit for human health because of the complex and rich formulation and composition of camel's milk. The way how we're going to be um, working with camel's milk is about it's covering that plethora of beneficial microorganisms that live in there. So we're going to be collecting milk samples and then passing these samples through the laboratory, working with a very high quality experienced team that has you know, years of knowledge, know-how in how to discover bacteria that live in the milk and, and respond for specific beneficial functions mm -hmm. that that milk will present when consumed. So what we do is to actually eliminate the necessity that every time people will have to drink a lot of milk to make the most out of that existing benefit and consume those bacteria. What will happen is that we're going to collect milk, discover the bacteria, characterize them, demonstrate the value of those probiotics that exist in the milk, and then we take just the bacterial component, which are probiotics, and we brew them. We're going to ferment and expand that quantity of bacteria to then put back into the milk. So as you know, milk has to go through a process called pasteurization, and this is actually necessary to make sure that milk that reaches market is safe for consumption. And it goes with no bad bugs, no nasties, no negative molecules or anything that could actually cause toxicity to the body, including coming from bacteria. So what we do is a mechanism of selection where we take that milk, we separate through a process called isolation, just the good bacteria. And like I said, we study them, we brew them, and then in the very end of the process, just before bottling, we input back a controlled and quantified condition uh, um, amount, I should say, of uh, beneficial probiotic bacteria that will then deliver therapeutic value. So in terms of the viability of camel's milk, I think um, it's a very primitive organism. And, and this is positive, in my humble opinion, as a, a biologist and, and a microbiologist, because you have a, a number of molecules that exist in the genetics, in the genetic makeup of camels that don't exist in cows or don't exist in other types of animals that give us milk. So when you consume camel's milk, what is actually happening is that you're intaking thousands of years of genetic evolution that essentially make camel's milk better for you, for consumption. Maybe some of the potential, for example, small molecules or regulatory mechanisms or hormones or genes that we haven't even studied yet they only exist in camel and they will not be present in other mammals and as a result every time we take a sip of camel's milk what we're actually intaking is a plethora of potentially medical molecules that will do good for our body, will contribute to our health, but there is no way that we would be able to acquire these same molecules from other organisms because those other types of animals don't contain those genes.